So last weekend I rolled up into Talladega National Forest for a weekend of moto camping and <laughs> I crashed on the way up there after turning around on the bike while riding, checking some gear that had fallen off. So that was fun. But I also started a video on um, hammock camping I think you'll find interesting despite the fact that it's a long video there's some interesting information specifically about ASIM hammocks which are really good for people like me that sleep on their sides and their stomachs instead of their backs so if you're interested in the idea of hammock camping I do some comparisons uh, between tents and hammocks and I hope you'll watch the whole video. It's uh, got some interesting information in there. I'm accomplishing that mission. The second mission is to do some dual sport moto camping um, stuff and then the third mission should I choose to accomplish it. I'm gonna try right now. I'm gonna try to expose some uh, non-believers to hammock camping um, specifically for the reasons where um, I did not discover uh, hammock camping what I discovered was um, ASIM hammocks and that's kind of what I'm going to show you today is the ASIM hammock uh, the uh, the wonderful thing about the ASIM hammock is um, people like me that sleep on our sides and on our stomach can actually sleep in a hammock. Most people think about a hammock as a banana, trying to sleep on a banana. And only the people that sleep on their backs can imagine sleeping on a banana. And I've always dismissed hammock camping, although I really like the idea of being able to go any place like this where there's a slope or there's not a nice flat area to put your tent down and you can hang in between two trees. Like this is a crazy place to put a tent right here. But look at this crazy view. You can actually put a tent over there where those rocks are jutting out, uh, but you still got a little bit of a slope. Um, this is a great place to camp. Actually, there's another place up there. Nice and grassy, fairly level, um, but there's so many places that I go that aren't. And typically now I don't use a tent unless there's no trees. So. If there's trees and they're spaced this far apart or maybe closer or a little bit further apart, I am hammock camping. I have learned my lesson um, when to camp and when to, when, to, when to camp in a tent and when to camp in a hammock. And a lot of it has to do with weather. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do to, to improve the weatherproof um, abilities of hammocks, but the heat loss factor is pretty important. Um, there's people that camp in winter in hammocks, but um, I haven't made it that far yet. So the trickiest thing about setting up a hammock is getting it uh, the height on the straps right and the tension it's a little bit more important on an ASIM because you want to be able to lay flat if that's your goal if that's and that's definitely my goal I like laying flat so um, so it's very important to get that right but to get that right you've got to get the distance right you've got to get the distance between the trees right and you've got to get the height right and you've got to get the tension right the big thing about ASIM hammocks, banana hammocks, you can just hang those between two trees. I'm pretty sure I don't remember ever sleeping in a banana hammock, but that's typically what you, what most people understand as a hammock. It's just a, it's a flat sheet that's bound up on, flat sheet of nylon that's bound up on two ends and strapped between two trees. This is a little bit different and I'll go into a little bit greater detail this evening after I've had a few beers. But the biggest thing um, setting these things up is getting the height correct, um, the, the distance from the, the, the ground um, to uh, where you tie it off, getting the distance between the trees right, and getting the tension right so you can slide um, 
sideways so you can lay flat. But I'll go into more detail with that later. I want to go ahead and get this thing set up. But that, like I said, this is an introduction. If you want to find out more about um, hammock camping, especially ASIMs, I'm not the best guy to talk to because I'm not a, I'm not an expert. But I'm what you got today. I would like to talk about some of the pros and the cons. Um, there's a lot of uh, pros and cons for tent and hammock camping. But um, as long as you're aware of the pros and cons, you won't get yourself into a sticky situation. I've been in a couple of those situations where I'm unprepared. So just to make sure that I'm clear, uh, ASIM hammock is not a brand name. ASIM is a type of hammock, just like a banana hammock, um, which is a standard hammock. The, the ASIM hammock is, is a type of design that allows you to slide um, diagonally across the hammock and sleep flat either on your side or on your stomach or even on your back if you like sleeping on your back um, flat then that's an option for you but I just wanted to make sure that that was clear because it kind of might seem unclear if you're not familiar with the design and I'm actually setting up uh, the the tarp right here and it's not perfectly set up there's a hundred ways you can set up this tarp here so hammock camping 101 so I gave you a little taste of the setup it's a lot easier if you just haven't had a head injury recently and are in tremendous pain um, I have bragged that it takes me less than three minutes to set up the hammock so if it's not raining out it's not going to be raining this is a pain in the ass. This is almost as hard to set up as a tent. I mean, it looks like a tent, really. But the hammock, I mean, it's throwing it around a tree, finding the right tree, throwing it around the tree. You can be sleeping in three minutes if you're so inclined. But um, the rain fly is a pain in the ass, especially if you're doing something fancy like trying to close off the wind or something like that. This is just kind of blocking a little bit of wind. It's got lots of ventilation in here because it's still kind of warm. But what I want to do now is crawl into the hammock and show you a little bit about what the difference is between a banana hammock and an ASIM hammock. And right off the top you can't really see any difference right it looks like a regular banana hammock um, but it's much much more and I'm gonna show you that as soon as I make sure I've got the camera pointing in the right direction yeah so I'm about to sit down in here the setting it up is stringing it between two trees is not a big deal just so you know the difference stringing it between two trees is not a big deal but getting the right angle the right sink in other words the 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 uh, the angle to the tree the angle coming off the tree to the um, to the hammock and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because I'm not the expert but I will put a link to one of the experts one of the guys that um, has got a great YouTube channel, Shug. I'll point in his direction and um, let him explain better the uh, the advantages, disadvantages, how to set up an ASIM correctly and all that. But I just want to show you the difference between a banana hammock, which is kind of, that's kind of what I'm sitting in now if I sit straight in it. Let me get adjusted here a little bit better. Move my ass up. So I'm almost in the center. I'm probably a little bit high. But so if, if I were to lay in here straight down the ridge line like I am now. Let me turn my camera here. If I was just to kick my feet up, this is a banana hammock. There's no difference between this hammock and a $30 hammock that you get at Walmart. There's no difference at all. 
This is what you lay out in your backyard in yeah, when you're just kind of taking a nap or whatever. But if you want to sleep and you're like me and you cannot sleep on your back to save your life, then you're going to need an ASIM if you're going to sleep in a hammock. And basically what an ASIM is, is you're twisting to the side. And when you twist to the side, there's this little pocket out here. And I don't know if you could tell, my hammock's not perfectly set up, but I can set it up perfectly. I have twisted my feet from this way to that way. I've also adjusted my head. Now I am almost laying flat. It's, it's almost a, a flat bed now. Um, the problems that I've had, that I've had are getting the ridge line set up perfectly and this is this is the ridge line and to to illustrate a perfectly set up hammock an ACM hammock you're supposed to be able to put your fingers like this and twist it like that so if it goes vertically at this line so that means it's it's a little bit too tight the ridge line is too tight so if I don't adjust this correctly I'm gonna be not sleeping as well tonight because it's not perfectly flat number one but if I adjust myself then it will be and this is a this is a fancy hammock I'll put a link in the uh, in the description below but it's got a a bug net and it's got a pocket over here I've got my drink cup I usually I put my keys in my wallet in here so in case somebody comes through my camp at night but this zips all the way up to the length I'll see if I can all the way up if I can actually perform this zipping thing and this is a quality hammock there's all kinds of good quality hammocks like this um, this is kind of a jungle style hammock but it's um, you kind of getting the idea the difference is now the thing the thing I want to impress on everybody is if you think that you can't hammock camp you're probably mistaken and this is all this video is I don't want to go into great detail because I am not an expert on hammocks but I'm slowly becoming a pretty good uh, proponent of hammock camping simply because it's such a uh, great alternative especially where I'm at right now um, there's some flat nice grassy camping down below me for tents there's some relatively flat camping up here but just imagine you're in the perfect spot like I am and there's nothing but the side of a cliff well as long as that side of the cliff has um, trees and properly spaced trees and that's the other thing I don't want to get into much too much detail I don't want to get in the dirt but go on Shug's um, YouTube channel and you can figure out a lot about how to space the trees correctly how to set up your hammock correctly because it's it's not like a tent you just push the poles through the holes and you know um, there's not really anything technical about setting up a tent you just put it on flat ground that's it stake it down uh, make sure the rain flies on that's it but hammock camping is a little bit different but it's really fast once you learn the techniques um it's it's really nice uh there's tie downs for um your hammock so you can keep it from swinging or you can just swing like this usually i don't i don't care that much um unless the wind's blowing but apparently there may be some storms tonight so hopefully i can capture some of that tonight that would be pretty cool but the other thing <laughs> the other thing one last thing and i'll probably do some follow-up stuff um the other thing that hammocks are good for is really you don't have to carry a camp chair when you have a hammock if it's not raining you don't need a rain fly if it's not you know if it's not moist outside and you're not going to get all damp from the dew overnight then you don't need a rain fly so you theoretically you could have this you could use this as a camp chair because this is great if you set it up correctly it's a great camp chair um you know it's you can set it up to the perfect height and you can sit instead of sitting on the ground 
Uh, the biggest thing for me, though, hammock versus tent camping is uh, weather. I mean, it could be storming, pouring down rain, like it may be at two o'clock in this in, in the morning. Well, what my plan is, this is the best thing for inclement weather. You can get soaked in a tent if you don't set it up correctly, if you're not in the right spot, if you don't have a a foot a good footprint, blah blah blah. You're you can it can be a disaster. But my plan is before I go to bed, I'm gonna take that chair and all my gear except my motorcycle and the stuff that goes in this top case. I'm gonna take all my gear and set it up under that tarp. And that way I've got access to all my crap and I'm gonna have a chair in there and I'm gonna have the ability to almost stand up in a tent, which most of the tents I've ever used, well, I've been in some big tents, but God, I can't imagine carrying those on a motorcycle. So um, anyway, there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons to both tent camping and hammock camping. And this is just the beginning. So, but I thought I, I, I really wanted to get that out there. I, I really wanted to get something for you guys to see that there is a possibility for you to be a hammock camper if you sleep on your back or you don't sleep on your back. Like I, I don't sleep on my back. And I never thought that I could do hammock camping just because I like sleeping. <laughs> Even when I'm in the woods, I like sleeping. So anyway, so I'm quite sure I did not do a good job of um, explaining uh, the uh, ACM hammock set up the other day when I was camping. Uh, <laughs> in my defense, I, I took a pretty hard lick in that crash and I wasn't really thinking sensibly not that I ever do but um, I think I did a poor job when I was trying to edit I decided I need to get out here and, and do a better job explaining um, how to how to actually set this thing up and give you a little bit better idea of how this thing works with a better um, tripod setup so you could see actually how you actually lay flat and um, but I also wanted to go over uh, make sure I'm, I, I, I made the points that I really wanted to make the other day at camp and I just wasn't capable of it, obviously. Um, I was in a lot of pain. <laughs> Maybe my, my, the video didn't reflect it, but I was in a lot of pain. I wasn't really thinking straight. And I think by the time I actually crawled into the, the hammock, I think I had four or five beers in me. So Anyway, um, today I'm setting up out in the backyard here on the edge of the, the woods. And if you can see, this is a really good example of how bad the surface is. Um, it, to put a tent down on this surface, uh, you'd have to do a lot of cleaning, a lot of chopping, a lot of clearing, and it would still be uncomfortable because you're on such a slope. This is a really um, intense slope, so I would say this is probably not going to be the best place to set up a tent, but it's a perfect place to set up a hammock. And I'm going to try this one more time to see if we can get a better idea of how this thing works. Just, uh, as, I, as I get older, it seems like it's harder. It gets harder and harder for me to crawl up off the ground nowadays. So that's why I don't, it's one of the many reasons I don't enjoy tent camping. Uh, getting up and down off the ground, especially first thing in the morning, uh, it's really hard. <laughs> Maybe I should be in better shape but uh, I'm not, and I still want to enjoy camping, so. Um, well, with all that said, this is what I look for when I set up. This, I, I believe they call this a shelf. It's a little section that you tie out, and it actually has a pocket for you to put your stuff in, your, um, your keys, your wallet. Um, I usually wear my headlight around my neck at night, because I don't want to fish around for um, cell phone, wallet, keys, typically what I put in there. Um, any other thing that I might need at night. Um, or maybe I just want to keep it safe. You can even carry a handgun in there. Um, I think I've done that a couple times. Uh, sketchier parts of the world. But uh, 
anyway so head height is usually where I want to start and I've got a hammock on my strap there's there's tons of different straps you can get I like this because it's it's quick it's fast and I can come in here pull it out of the bag boom snap just snap this around here just a light beaner um, this beaner, those, these two beaners are probably about as heavy as uh, the whole hammock and they're still pretty light so this whole hammock setup is pretty light and then I'm gonna just walk down to the other end with the other one hopefully I've got enough slack in the strap And that's going to be pretty close to where I want to be, but you never know exactly how close or how uh, what your drop is going to be. And uh, and I'll come back with these technical terms. I'm calling it drop, your slope, slope of your your uh, lines. But you're not going to ever know that until you get inside the hammock and start trying to stretch around and spin around. And I'll see if I can. Show you that right now but so now you kind of want the right slope on here and i'm not so sure i've got that but it also looks like i've got the right height for this so i can sit right down in it and this is good this is really good for me um, i can sit right here i can mess with my gear if i wanted to i could even start a campfire although i'm kind of a uh, I don't like to camp too close to my fire because those embers do get up and they burn holes in your expensive tents and expensive uh, hammocks and rain tarps and holes don't do real well with uh, water, rain, mosquitoes, things like that. So um, I tend to camp away from my fires at least 10-15 feet. You can still get some embers depending on the wind but um, anyway. This feels right so far, but I'm not going to know until I get in it. And I'm going to show you once again, laying down in a typical banana hammock, which is, you know, like that, which is really comfortable for people that sleep on their backs, but not so much for people like me. And you can see banana hammock here, and then when I kick my legs out here, I've got almost a flat space. And that is just about right, and it looks pretty doggone close. So, and that's going to be pretty, pretty doggone close, especially with the ridge line. If I can twist the ridge line vertical like that, then that's going to be pretty close. So I got it right first time on this, and now I'm going to go stake my lines out to keep it from swinging and make it easier to get in and out of. I want to turn once again, um, kick my feet out to the side so you can see it. Hopefully, I'm going to get another camera too out here, and then I'm going to zip up and show you kind of how it, it fits in here. So, again, this is the typical banana that most people are familiar with. And then you turn at an angle, and then, in theory, if you get if the stars align, you'll be sleeping relatively flat. And then you could just zip up from here, keep yourself safe from the bugs, and in my case, keep keep me from falling out or at least losing my pillow. A lot of times, I'll sleep with the inflatable pillow. Keeps you. Keeps you safe from uh, no seeings and biting things and you know things that want to fly into your tent. But uh, yeah, I can sleep with this like this all day long, and uh, it's still got a little bit of a bow. It's still a little bit uncomfortable, but it opens up the option for people that can't sleep on their backs. <sighs> and I can show you. Typically, I sleep on my side. Sometimes I roll over to my stomach. It's a little bit harder to maneuver in these things than in a tent, but you could do it, and you can sleep on your you can sleep on your side here, 
or you can sleep on your stomach. A lot of people sleep on their stomachs. And uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm going to go get another camera, get you another angle here. But it's real easy to get out of this thing in the middle of the night because I get up a lot. I have to pee at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes. And it's really hard to get my old ass up off the ground <laughs> at 2 a.m. Um, but all you gotta do is just do a little bit of swinging here. And you're up. Let me go get another camera. It might help a little bit if I crawled into this thing with my camera so you could actually see what I was doing and I'll give you a tour of the inside while I'm in there. Um, it's, I wanna tell you the story of how I came to hammocks because I think that's interesting too. But once you, once, you, once you do this a few times, it's, it looks uncomfortable, but I can tell you, I don't think it's near as uncomfortable as getting in and out of a tent. And there's times that I would rather be in a tent. Um, when it's really cold and there's a flat place, nice, soft, flat, warmish ground to sleep in, I would rather be, I would rather be on the ground myself. So it's not, I still would say that I'm relatively objective about this. Um, there's good things and there's bad things about this. But I'm gonna go ahead and flip around here and get relatively flat. And so <laughs> I do wanna tell you my story of how I came about hammock camping bunch of the guys that I hung out with, motor camp with, they were all raging about uh, hammocks and how awesome it was and how easy to set up it was and how lightweight it was, all these advantages. And most of those are true. Um, but the guys that I was camping with were also camping in banana hammocks. They were younger guys and they would throw these $30 little hammocks up in the woods. And most of the time when we were riding, it wasn't raining. So they didn't have rain flies or any tarps or anything. They just hung two ham a hammock in, in between two trees and went to sleep like a little baby. Like I guess people that sleep on their back can. And uh, I just thought they were all crazy and you know, hey, I, I can't sleep on my back. I can't do this. Um, it's nice to chill at night before I go to sleep. I could do that. Um, I could probably pass out, but I couldn't sleep all night in, in a banana position. So um, it just never would work for me. So I always dismissed it. And then I started hearing these guys talking about the ASIM. And they were saying, well, you know, you, you turn sideways and you can lay flat. And, and I thought, no, that's, that's impossible. You can't do anything like that. And that's one of the reasons I'm making this video is I want everybody to understand that there are options. And specifically, the reason why I transitioned to hammock camping is because a lot of the places that I camped were just like the place I'm hanging in now. Um, they're not flat. They're covered with litter. And I didn't want to spend 20 minutes... Uh, policing all the pine cones and sticks and lumps and rocks and stuff uh, to, to throw a tent down. And on top of that, a lot of places, I'm just camped on the side of a hill. Or a lot of the places that I wanted to, to camp, I, the only camping option was a stealth option. So in other words, um, one of the first places that I stealth camped was on the uh, Blue Ridge Parkway because it was, I don't know, it was 10, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, and I rolled into what I thought would be an empty, slightly empty campground. I think it was fall, early spring. Anyway, the campground was full. And the only place that I knew of that was anywhere near was like 30, 40, 50 miles away, and it was a hotel room. And I was like, screw this. I'm just going to, I'm going to keep driving until I find some place on the side of the Blue Ridge Parkway that I could throw out a tent. There's got to be something. And I kept driving and driving and riding. I kept riding and riding. And finally I found this little island in a, in a nice grassy lawn that gave me just enough cover that I thought that I could throw my tent behind it and nobody would see me. But uh, I had to work pretty hard at this. And 
uh, after I did that one time, I thought, I'm going to start finding another option. And that option finally became uh, uh, the, uh, the hammock. And more specifically, I got a camo tarp that would fill in the woods just about anywhere. So I can, I can conceivably camp, you know, <laughs> outside the White House if I wanted to, you know. Uh, if I could get onto the grounds and find a little uh, niche in the, in the back of the White House, I could probably, you know, camp on the White House lawn if, if I wanted to, if I was sneaky enough, theoretically. Um, and I know a lot of folks do that. A lot of folks uh, camp downtown, and uh, I would like to do that. And my tarp's big enough that I could actually hide my motorcycle behind it, and I have several times. Um, camping in places where there's, you know, you're not supposed to camp here. Is it really that illegal? No, probably not, but you know, if somebody threw you, saw you throwing your bright green, yellow, orange tent up, uh, you're, you're probably gonna get a flashlight at two o'clock in the morning with, uh, somebody uh, that's not real happy with you camping there so anyway just some thoughts um, why this is such an appealing thing to me and while I'm in here uh, before I call out I want to show you the the shelf this is what they call a shelf it's just this little pocket here that if you pull it tight enough it all it actually kind of looks like a shelf but um, anyway enough to throw a bunch of gear here uh, my last trip in Calabiga I had uh, Golly, I had a tablet in there. I had my keys, my wallet, flashlight, uh, Bluetooth, earbuds. I had a bunch of crap in there. It'll hold. <laughs> It'll hold a lot. So, um, anyway, um, I think that's it. The only other things I can think about is uh, the pros and cons for tent camping versus um, hammock camping tent camping uh, fairly easy to do three season camping is fairly easy to do um, as long as you have a flat somewhat level spot so if you've ever cut camped tent camped on an unlevel spot what you wind up doing typically <laughs> is sliding down the hill into a corner of your tent I've done that plenty of times and that's kind of ridiculous and flat, grassy, soft areas are not ubiquitous. They're not all over the place. I've camped enough places to know that there, it depends on what kind of uh, countryside you're camping in. You know, Nebraska, you just need to find something that's not covered in cow shit, I guess. Um, Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, um, <laughs> you know, lots of flat stuff. Uh, if you're camping in the mountains, it's gonna be harder. So tent camping is going to be just about require flat, level, um, soft-ish ground to put your tent on. Um, you need to be away from stuff that's going to fall on your head in a, a hammock or a tent. But um, a lot of times if you're camping in... Uh, in between uh, trees, you might have some dead growth above your head, and that might be on the only flat spot that you that you have. So, um, tent camping, flat, um, fairly wide footprint too, depending on your tent. You know, sometimes you might need a six by six, eight by eight footprint to be able to put a tent down. That's a lot of area if you're looking for um, uh, a place to put a tent down. Um, another option is the bivy sacks. I don't know a lot of people that use those outside of the military, but uh, maybe a lot of hikers. I've just, I don't know a lot of hikers, so at least the serious hikers. So, um, tent camping is good if you can find a flat level, um, soft area with no dead growth hanging above your head. Um, it's good for most seasons uh, you can get a four season tent pretty easily I think they tend to be a little bit heavier um, but hammock camping uh, as as compared to tent camping is you can camp anywhere that there's trees and I've been believe me I have been in places that did not have trees I've been in the desert I've been uh, 
one of the first experiences I had where I couldn't find any trees, um, I was driving across country, or riding my motorcycle across country, and there were <laughs> the only trees in East or West Texas uh, were next to people's houses, and I wasn't going to camp next to people's houses. So I camped out in a cow pasture by a um, <laughs> by a uh, a radio tower, and I hooked my hammock up to the fence that surrounded the radio tower and my bike and about 2 a.m. I must have wiggled around enough to pull my bike over anyway that was a fun experience the next time I camped without trees was in um, just outside of Salt Lake City there were trees around people's houses but the place I finally wound up camping for the night was in a park and I used my tarp as a tent it, the, the ground was warm, it was plenty warm, it was kind of cool at night, but uh, the ground was plenty warm, so I just threw my bag out on the ground, nice grassy ground, and uh, pulled up, ran the uh, lines for the tarp between my bike and a, uh, I think it was a, some movable object, but it was fine, it, you know, it wasn't holding my body weight. Anyway, um, if you have the right gear, you can camp just about anywhere but a specifically a hammock allows you to camp anywhere that there's trees um, that'll hold your weight and I really like that I really like being up off the ground sometimes sometimes you might be camping near a ton of insects and they'll crawl in your tent believe me um, they'll crawl in your gear if you leave it outside your tent um, so being able to get your stuff up off the ground is pretty huge especially when it's really bad weather that's another big advantage to me I've gotten wet in tents before and when you're wet and it's cold outside you're gonna be miserable and you might have some chances of hypothermia so staying dry is a big thing and it's a big advantage to me maybe I just don't have all the skills to do it in a tent I don't know but I've gotten wet in tents before and crawling in a tent when it's pouring down rain is pretty damn hard to do but you saw how I crawled under that tarp the other, the other day um, at Chiha, and it's just a transition. You're not on the ground sopping your knees in the in the mud. You're just walking underneath your tarp, and you can shed your gear while you're standing up potentially. So, um, it's a pretty big difference. Um, the downsides to hammock camping are is it takes a lot more prep to do it in the winter. Or colder conditions you're gonna have to have a ground pad at least um, and if it gets down below freezing I think you're gonna have to have some kind of an under quilt which is more weight more bulk um, but some people swear by hammocks and they won't do anything else and I, I'm starting to understand why but I wanted to give you guys a, a kind of an idea of what I do hammock camping and how I do it so it might open some doors for you um, the hammock that I've got is pretty expensive. I think this was thing was close to two hundred dollars. The uh, the tarp was another hundred and fifty. I think I can't remember, but it, they're not cheap. So what I would recommend the good ones are not cheap. The ASIMs are not cheap. You can get a banana hammock for thirty bucks. So what I would recommend um, find somebody that's got an ASIM that will let you throw it in your backyard for one night. That way, if it doesn't work out, two o'clock in the morning, you can't sleep. Um, roll out of that thing and go hit the sack and uh, take it back to your friend the next day but at least you'll know if this is a possibility for you because I, I would hate for anybody to uh, miss out on an opportunity to go moto camping if they can if you can't stand tent camping if you're too old like me I mean I'm I can still tent camp I still do it's just I would prefer to do this any almost every single time I would prefer to um, hammock camp if I could because it opens up so many more options if there's trees options are open um, tent camping flat wide spot um, flat wide level spot that's a, that's a lot you know if, if you like camping in campgrounds they'll have a flat level spot for you I don't like camping in campgrounds I like camping in the woods away from people so anyway I'm getting long winded that's odd huh <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, if you got questions about um, hammock camping, I may be able to answer some of them, most of them maybe, um, the specifics. 
there's all kinds of ways to set these things up too. Um, my big rain fly, you could do anything. I've set it up as a as a tent for four or five guys, um, an open tent where we could look out on the where we were the other day. Um, I've set that up like that. There's there's all kind. I mean, you could set it up to cover your picnic table for 15 people probably. Um, as a sloping thing, much bigger cover. You could have people entertain people around your hammock if you want to do. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do with a big rain fly like that. Most people use a smaller rain fly, less bulky, less weight. Anyway, um, if you can't tell already, I'm a big fan of hammocks and uh, I'm not trying to push anybody into hammocks. I just want to explore, let you guys explore the ideas that I have and the reasons that I have for, for hammock camping. It worked for me 90% of the time and uh, maybe it'll work for you too. Uh, the other night on the mountain, I slept better in my hammock than I do in my bed most nights because it was just so nice. Um, anyway, so next time it'll be a short video about me setting up my camp chair that I almost died for when it fell off my bike. Yeah, I crashed because of this guy, but you'll find out how cool this thing is. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's heavy, but it's very cool. So check me out next time. <laughs>